Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome to another KSP Kerbal Space Program video. No, no SS, SS, T, D, 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 whoa, let's not go there. No SSTO today, but still I think something very interesting, if not really cool. I, I kind of geeked out over it. I don't know if anyone here has seen the movie Abyss, came out in the 90s. I'm pretty sure if you were born in that era, you know what I'm talking about. If you're a little younger than that, you may have heard about it, but if you haven't seen it, it's definitely a must-see. But anyway, in stock Kerbal Space Program, it's really hard to go deep sea diving, mostly because there's nothing down there, and the stock ocean is unforgivable it doesn't act like water at all however however with the scatterer mod the oceans become a lot more realistic combine that with the parallax mod you now have oceanic vegetation which makes exploring the bottom of the ocean actually kind of cool so with this in mind I wanted to build a submarine but not just any submarine. I wasn't trying to go for a, you know, Sea Wolf class nuclear sub. I was going for more of an explorer sub. In the movie The Abyss, they have these little itty bitty submarines. They have a big old window in the front, a flat platform on top, covering a cylinder, cylindrical shape of course for pressure and all that jazz with little engines everywhere and lights all along the sides and the front to light up everything below them with little tanks on the bottom acting as either landing pads or whatever they got the little arm and everything it just it looks really cool so that's what I wanted to try to to build in KSP was something similar to these small exploratory submarines in KSP you can make your vessel sink into the water if you use heavier objects of course that are not very buoyant one of these well-known objects is the ore tank a fully loaded ore tank is heavy enough to sink something that's not as heavy into the water now there's some also there's there's another trick to it as well but we'll talk about that later at first I just wanted to see if I could what I actually needed in order to make this sink if you're gonna make a sub you need it to sink on purpose preferably I tried using the small ore tanks at first but it wasn't really doing it the next thing I wanted to try was also a a type of propulsion system so I tried the new well not new but one of the robotic parts that allows you to build propeller engines I tested all of them out I tested all the propellers out I tested I, I even went as far as doing the helicopter ones is with the so I went with the with the big fat flubby ones that looked like something more akin to a propeller and it just was not working it worked great as soon as it caught atmosphere but as soon as it went into the water even with scatter mod making the oceans more realistic they wouldn't catch on nothing now I've kind of predicted this kind of behavior with these parts they're they're meant for atmospheric flight not exactly underwater stuff however I do know that ailerons work just fine when it comes to underwater as well as atmosphere so in old-school KSP fashion I went ahead and put some ailerons on the ship or submarine and lo and behold I was getting traction underwater now at first it was a little wonky I had to tune it a little better but it ultimately worked now the other thing that I mentioned that would help you sink is an actual fairing. If you put a fairing in the back of the vessel and then stretch it out to about the same size as the vessel, making sure to offset it first so you can build out the fairing and then move it back into the vessel, all the parts will be categorized as as stowed away. This means that most of their physics is completely inert or neutralized, allowing your ship to not be as buoyant as it used to be. Now this also helps in reducing the drag completely when it comes to SSTOs, but that's a completely other thing and kind of controversial since people say it's a loophole and therefore doesn't count, but I digress. The small ore tanks that I was using weren't, weren't working very well, so I just opted for the medium-sized ore tanks instead. So the dilemma that I was having at the time was just simply trying to get this thing to barely float. I didn't want it to sink, I wanted it to barely float. That way all I could do was point the craft down and start diving underneath the water if I wanted to dive. But for the most part, the craft itself would float above the water if left by itself but just barely now for maneuvering purposes I figured you know we're underwater it'd probably be probably be better to treat the water in a sense as if you were in space as well as atmosphere kind of like half and half using ailerons a aileron a a elevon elev el el have I been saying aileron this entire fuck I have shit elevon damn it 
It's not like I'm going to go back and record all that shit again. Anyway, moving on. Using elevons to maneuver your vessel, but at the same time using a type of thruster system to maneuver your vessel. So the idea I came up with was the engines would have a type of thrust vectoring capability. It sounded good in theory, but in practice it was actually becoming kind of a pain in the ass. In order for something like that to work, I would need the engines to be directly on the center of mass. But because they were sort of either out of the way or higher up or too far from the center of mass, the ship would tilt to the left or right violently. Let's just say it, this 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 was not going to work. I needed to figure something out and quick. So instead of just going for the engines that are able to do a type of thrust vectoring, I stayed with the idea of, of a more atmospheric approach. Putting elevons around the ship, allowing me to steer up and down and left or right. I um, purposefully made the engines a little higher so that the thrust to weight ratio, or excuse me, well, the, the, the center of thrust was a little higher than the center of mass, meaning that at full thrust, the ship would naturally want to nosedive but not too much. That way I could counteract it with the control fins, keeping the ship upright during transit. Now the thing that I did add to the maneuverability was one engine could go into reverse while the other one would stay in forward position, allowing a little bit of a spin left or right or full reverse maneuverability or maneuvering through the water. And it actually, it, it, it's not the, the greatest control in the world. This is definitely not something that's gonna do, you know, cartwheels and loop-de-loops anytime soon but it can get you to where you want to go and position you exactly where you want to be. And that's what I was going for. Not exactly the maneuverability you see in the movie Abyss, but close enough. Now, yes, I could have used a butt ton of reaction wheels in order to get the perfect maneuverability, but I wasn't, I wasn't going for that. That, that seems very cheaty to me. I wanted to be able to control the craft using physics alone and not some sort of magical movement device. RCS thrusters sounded cool at the time, but I was like, really? That's it's not exactly something you'd see on a submarine. Not to mention that I've seen people use jet engines before, which I guess you could because this is a game, of course. But submarines typically use propellers, so I stayed with that. So now that I had the weight right and I had the maneuvering thrusters just where I wanted them, now is now 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 it was time to paint the son of a gun, make it look cool. Later on, I'd go ahead and put on science arms and even a little grappler arm, mostly for looks. It wasn't really going to do anything, but it looked cool. There was also a hatch on the very top. I wanted the vessel to have an actual working hatch. I think it worked. I think it came out pretty neat. This is definitely something I could see being on board a larger vessel and then once in this particular spot the Kerbals would board the vessel and then the vessel would be lowered down and released into the water either behind the craft or in the middle of the craft whatever the case may be. I think the coolest part of this build was when I turned the ambient light down to almost nothing and I was at like a depth of 700 meters or so and when I turned off the lights everything went dark. Like in real life the whole damn thing went dark dark. I was like, oh my gosh, I could just imagine some sort of Kraken or something coming out and, you know, just attacking the sub. It actually did give you that spook feel. It was a very spoopy feel, very spoopy. Now, I don't know if this is particularly true, but I do remember seeing something, some sort of mod that actually put wildlife on Kerbin, like fishes and everything else. I'll do some more research about that, but if anybody knows about that kind of mod, let me know what it's called. But anyway, there it is. Your SSTO, I mean submarine. Your your exploratory exp exploration or you got to fudge. You're a submarine for hire. Yes, there we go. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like and if you loved what you saw, consider subscribing. I upload often, mostly KSP for now. We also have a membership program if you're interested. If you become a member, you get cool little emojis and badges and stuff next to your name. Pretty cool. Check it out. Also don't forget to click on that bell notification so you're notified when I drop a video because if you don't, KSP will KSP, what the fuck? YouTube will just leave you in the dust. It'll, it'll, I could I could I could drop all kinds of videos and you'd never know. That's YouTube. But anyway, love you all, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye bye.